hear me? <laughs> but one thing about it, we was going to have class. You better know that. Like, we ain't missing no classes. Like, unless I got to recharge the chi. And I don't do that often. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no everyday thing I, I, where it's going to affect class. So we going to always have class. All right. So for those of you coming in here, I see y'all coming in here. We had a honey quick. Welcome to class, y'all. Late night. For those of y'all coming in here, welcome to class. For those of y'all who ain't why and probably was here at nine thirty nine, and I wasn't here, so you probably ain't gonna see it. So you click on tomorrow. Welcome to class. Well, and whatever, whenever you watching this video, wherever you at, whatever you doing, welcome to class. All right. Now, normally I got the camera sitting back. I'm holding the camera close for a reason because I'm finna flip the camera around because it's one of them type of classes where I really want to show y'all what I'm talking about. I can talk to y'all about it, but I just want to I want to reference some I want to reference something today. Okay? I want to reference some things. So I see y'all coming in here. Peace to the gods and goddesses of planet Kai. I see y'all coming in here reflections. All right. I bet you roll that. Um, how y'all feeling? Hold on. <sighs> All right. Welcome to class. Welcome to class. All right. So today we're here to talk about the real super saints. All right. So before we get started, it's imperative that I open this lecture with the right spiritual energy. Let me first by start. So let me first start by saying peace to the gods and goddesses of planet Kai. Peace, meaning positive energy always creates elevation. All right. Um, like I said, if you're just walking in class, you haven't missed anything. We just opening up. Um, I'm actually finna spin the camera around. And put it on the laptop. So it's not going to be on me today. It's going to be on the laptop. It's only going to be on me now. When I spin the camera around, we is going to stay on the laptop. Because I want y'all to see exactly what I'm talking about. Alright, so I hope y'all feeling good out there. I hope y'all been meditating. Working on your breath work. Working on your breathing. Paying attention. Have, keeping your third eye open. This is a time to be very, uh, very observant. We're going through a Neptune retrograde. So a lot is going to be being like how I always say all is being revealed. A lot is going to be a lot is going to be being revealed. Many things will be revealed. You will notice between now and the rest of what you want to call this year. And not just like on a cosmic level, like, or to the public, but like amongst your like family and friends and people in your household and and people that you work with and, you know, people that you, you know, this is the energy we're moving in because remember, it's about your, it's about souls. It's about the frequency. So everybody has a soul calling it. Everybody's getting pulled to their to they side. And it's been going on since last year, really, but it's going to speed up heavy as we move through this Neptune, Neptune energy. So keep that in mind. Reflections out there as we move through this Neptune energy. Um, let me start out by saying I want to send the deepest of, of insight to my elders tonight. Um... And I thank you, like I say, for, for speaking to your grandkids and, and those people in your family that are the youth that reach back out to me. Um, sending peace your way, positive energy always creates elevation. Definitely. And we appreciate you being in here. Um, to my peers, those 20s, 30s, those in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, how you feeling? Reflection. We the bridge. I want y'all, I, I want y'all to when I flip this camera around, I want y'all to see for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I want you to, because, you know, all is being revealed as this system implodes within itself. We are in the last days of the matrix. Do not be fooled. Like I say, it's just, you know, we can just enjoy this shit. Nothing's, nothing's wrong with that. 
But like I always remind you all, understand where you at, you know, so understand what time we in, understand the frequency we on. Understand that. All right, so to to my peers, like I said, I'm sending you all insight as well and peace, positive energy always creates elevation or proper enlightenment always creates elevation. However you want to have you want to trip, however you want to flip it, however you want to flip it, however you want to flop it, however you want to flip it, however you want to flop it, man. To the youth, those 21, to the youth, those 21 and under, y'all know how I feel about y'all. You know what I'm saying? The energy, you know what I'm saying? It'd be the energy for me. Um, the impact is being felt in the streets and in the trenches because it's a lot of youth. It's a lot of youth that's in this university and y'all spread out around the country. So, which is bringing more, you know what I'm saying, other younger guys into the university. I get a lot of emails, a lot of DMs about them asking me about things, about getting out the streets. So, I see we reaching the, the youth. That's that's what's up. Um, I want y'all to tap in though tonight. We're going to talk about deoxyetheric acid tonight. We're going to talk about metaphysics a little bit again. We're going to dive into some metaphysics. Um, um, and, you know, I'm going to use a reference point. I'm going to show y'all a card. We're going we gonna to break down a cartoon. Um, and it's the reason why I use the word saying. All right? Like, I promise y'all, I'm, I'm really sitting here thinking about, like, making my own cartoon or something and just putting it out, like, Finding somebody to know how to do it and paying them, you know what I'm saying, to put it out. Because I like a lot of the lessons that I give, I need you all to see this shit. You know what I'm saying? I need y'all to see this shit. Like, I can say it, but it's almost like in Hollywood how they got a screen, a writer. You know, they got a the writer, he write the shit down, y'all. And then, you know what I'm saying, after he write the shit down, you know what I'm saying, they go film the shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to do. We got to make that happen. Somebody in the university got to know how to draw that good or film that good or something, man. I will pay you, okay? Because, you know, when I go to Google and I look and I pull things up, it's just not there. They're not going to give you that. So I am already I already have books coming out. I'm like, okay, I read a lot of books. I know I've read a lot of books. I know that a lot of the information is in books, but it's just a lot of deep shit. It's still not in books that they only got in the books in the Vatican. So I'm like, okay, let me put a book out. I'm coming out with the books. I'm going to put the books out. Cool. But it's like, okay, damn, we need, like, I ain't trying to be on Netflix or nothing, y'all feel me? But I'm just saying, like, we, don't, we ain't got to go that route. We ain't got to go to the flick or nothing. We ain't got to go to the Netflix or nothing, you feel me? But I'm just saying, like, we need a cartoon for this shit or something, like, so that it, it didn't, it'll make the kids, the kids be able to grasp the message easier too, y'all feel me? But like, nah, man, like, I wish I could just sit back and watch it myself and sh just speak it and watch it and show it. But like, <sighs> but anyway, so what I have to basically do is I have to go into use their references and then hope that you can bear with me through their references because you got to understand the oppressor is so motherfucking slick. You know, he's a slick motherfucker, this Zeus motherfucker, you see what I'm saying? His bitch ass. That's why, that's why I feel like I feel about him, y'all, like. I feel like that. You know what I'm saying? He real slick. You know what I'm saying? He real, real slick. All right, so <clears throat> a lot of people should know what have should have heard the term Super Saiyan. But guess what? Truth is, I'm pretty sure it, 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 if mo the only people who probably know what a Super Saiyan is is the goddesses that watch Dragon Ball Z, and that's rarely few. <laughs> You feel me? And, and the gods, goddamn it, they grew up on it. I know the gods remember Dragon Ball Z for a fact. Now, when you talking that, I can't even say all the gods because that's at a certain age group. Like, you know, the, the shorties nowadays ain't watching no Dragon Ball Z. They outside, you know what I'm saying, being reckless. You feel me? It's a different era, you know what I'm saying? They ain't, you know, so... We need balance tonight, y'all, is what I'm saying. We need balance, y'all. We just hit 500 some live viewers. Y'all at University, thank y'all for walking in here on the late night side. Y'all probably was here first, but guess what? I was late. Okay, it was me. It wasn't y'all. It wasn't It wasn't nobody's fault, all right? I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I don't want to close my throat chakra and be lying to y'all and shit. It was me, y'all. 
It was just me, y'all. It wasn't. It ain't no reason. It was just. It was just self, y'all. I just. I was just late today. Bear with me. Feel me. Bear with me. You know what I'm saying? But I see y'all coming up in here because y'all probably was already outside. Like, man, where the fuck God at? Man, man, we gone. Man, we be back later. Man, we ain't. God ass, man. He be on his own time. You know, he already be talking about time ain't real. He be. He sure be proving the shit because he sure will say he going to be on at 8.39 and he don't come on at 2 a.m. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, though. So, but anyway, so like I was saying, we talking about this term Super Saiyan because that's the name of the lecture, right? The real Super Saiyans. All right. So to understand what a Super Saiyan is, you know. I have to go to Google, all right? Now, for those of you who never watched a cartoon called Dragon Ball Z, we're going to learn a little bit about it today, all right? And the references and what they really refer to and what they mean and how they, and how they um, refer back to us as a species in this whole war that took place since these... Parasitical invaders landed on our planet in their year of 1492. They tell the whole story. They damn near telling you the story in Dragon Ball Z. But I'm a, we gonna basically we gonna break that down. All right, the real Super Saiyans. Hope you rolled up. If you ain't rolled up, it's all good. You don't gotta do something you don't normally do. Be yourself. That's always my advice to you. Be yourself. You can never go wrong being yourself. That's high vibration to be yourself. That's why I don't get on here and pump fake with y'all. That's low vibration. High vibration is to be yourself. Okay? So. On the cover, I showed... A black god. Flip this around. Let me flip this around. All right. So we flipping the camera around. We still good? It's still okay. Cool. All right. So... This was the cover, all right? This was the cover of today's lecture. It said the real Super Saiyans. Now, the God on his cover, that's Afro Samurai, all right? I just used his picture because I wanted to make, I'm talking about the real Super Saiyans, so I wanted to show somebody with carbon. And like I was just saying, we don't have too many cartoons like that of us. So, you know, I went and just grabbed a picture of Afro Samurai from Boondocks, and I used his picture, you know, and that's a good image. That's a carbonated being. All right. So. The real Super Saiyans. What is a Super Saiyan? A Super Saiyan is a, is a character that was depicted in Dragon Ball Z to be fictional. The Super Saiyans are a race of a warrior race. In a, a fictional warrior race, allegedly, a fictional warrior, the Super Saiyans are allegedly supposed to be a fictional warrior race, y'all. In a cartoon named Dragon Ball Z, which this is this isn't from Dragon Ball Z. This is Afro Samurai from Boondocks. We gonna scroll to Dragon Ball Z, cause we got elders in here that ain't never watched no goddamn Dragon Ball Z, so they don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. 
So I got to break it down for everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't seen no Dragon Ball Z. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Super, super who? Some people probably couldn't even pronounce that la- that S word. Motherfucker, what is this lecture? The real super say I ends. Well, I rock with him, so I know it's got to be good. I'm going to just tune in. He's going to make the shit make sense later. He'll make it make sense later, goddamn shit. <laughs> y'all ass crazy. Y'all can feel y'all energy. And you know, you got the guys in here like, nigga, I, I watched every episode. I already knew what the Super Saiyans was. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? He, shit, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, I, I already knew what the Super Saiyans was, nigga. Nigga, get to the download, nigga. What's the download, nigga? You know, you got the impatient gods. Then you got the you got the guys that that's in their super higher self. So they just cool, calm, collect. They just they they they, they didn't rolled up. You know what I'm saying? They they sitting back. They like yeah, God finna go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Make this shit make sense tonight. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Gotta make it make sense, y'all. Peace to the gods and goddesses of planet Kai, man. How y'all feeling? I see y'all coming up in here. We got Afro Samarizi on the on the on the board right now. Afro Samurai from Boondocks. He's our he's our he's our he's our god. I don't want to say male model. He's our god model for the evening right here. All right, but the lecture isn't about him. But if you do just speaking about him in Boondocks real quick, they show him he's a bad motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And you know the way he the way they show his character moving the boondocks you know once again that's 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 DEA but that's a whole nother lecture all right so we talking about the real super saiyans and the saiyan race was a warrior race that took over a planet all right and in dragon ball z i'm going to show you how they make these saiyans appear to be the good guys when the saiyans are the bad guys all right now the story that they tell you in dragon ball z this is how the old, this is how the oppressor confuses you right We are the real Super Saiyans. All your carbonated beings. Your nine ether beings. Once you see that everything, all the traits of the Super Saiyans, which I'm about to let you see, you'll know why we are the Super Saiyans. However, though, in Dragon Ball Z, the oppressor wants to fool you. Here, babe. The oppressor wants to fool you, right? Hmm? My bad. The oppressor wants to fool you, right? So in Dragon Ball Z, he hides your history, all right, and your and your abilities behind a fictional race called the Super Saiyans. Meanwhile, he tells a complete different story. Okay. Let me run this back before I go to it. And I'm going to show it to you. In this cartoon, Dragon Ball Z. When he shows you the Saiyans. The whole Saiyan story is really the story of what the human beings did when they landed on our planet in the year 1492. Okay. But all the traits of the Super Saiyans are actually the traits of us. This is how much this is how cold the oppressor is with his lies. Let's check him out tonight. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's check him out. All right. So boom. This is the sayings. All right. The sayings are a fictional race that was created, allegedly, all right, in a cartoon called Dragon Ball Z. And I urge everybody, if you ain't never seen it, order it on YouTube. Watch the whole goddamn cartoon every season, okay? Because they tell you so many stories about what's going on in the cosmos and these different extraterrestrial races in this cartoon, okay? And when we and what you're gonna see tonight is what you gotta know is this: 
why, how did the Hollywood creator had as much detail about the Saiyan race for this just to be fictional? All right. Look at how they dress. You see their tails? These are the Saiyans right here, right? These are the Saiyans in Dragon Ball Z. Who, who they look like? Caveman, right? They don't, don't they look just like how cave they told you caveman used to be dressed? And then you see a tail right here. Why do they have a tail? All right. This represents the animal genetics. They are humanoid looking, right? These are your human beings. The Saiyans represent your human being race. Their looks, right? Their whole, their look in this cartoon. This is a very deep cartoon. All right. Because it's talk, it talks about our story in this cartoon, but it's, it's hidden. These are the sayings. Look at them. Look at how they, but look at how this is broken down on this website. This is how you should know this isn't, this isn't no fucking cartoon. Look at how it's broken down. Other names, home world, habitat, body type, height, locomotion, diet, sapien level, status, universe, created by. And you will read this. A person is not, don't have a third eye open, right? They'll read this. And won't have no clue. But let me let's read about the sayings. And we already know the we already know, right? The creation story. We know the creation story that the oppressors taught us in school about that the world started either A from the fucking Big Bang out in out in out in space or B from Adam and Eve. God made Adam and then out of Adam's out of Adam's rib he made Eve. These are the two stories that they that the oppressors tell you that how life was created here on this planet. Now I have came and told you, and other intellects have told you about a different story where I say, hey, that is not what happened. We've been here, we created this planet, and these human beings came and landed on our planet. And they entered our planet through portals in the Caucasus Mountains. And these human beings come from our brother Zeus who created them to destroy us. All right. Now, let's read about the Saiyans. Check this out. Saiyans are an endangered race of sapient humanoids. Widely known for being a naturally aggressive warrior race who are one of the strongest species in the universe. Now, when you're talking about, he, once again, these are your traits. they talking about us, the Anunnaki gods. Remember, I told you in this cartoon, they gave the Saiyans all our strengths. OK. While mixing their story in, but they gave them our strengths in here. All right. So when they say naturally aggressive race, yes, human beings were naturally aggressive. Right. They were aggressive in the caves because they before they came through the caves back home on their planet of Nern, they were aggressive. They are they were bred with animal traits, so they are full of animal instincts. They react out of animal instincts. They are very barbaric. OK, this is known about. Human beings all through early history in Europe, you can go look at it. They was always barbaric. The German, go look at their Germanic raids. Go Google the Germanic raids. All right, and how all those traps came out of the Caucasus Mountains, killing all the Moors and stuff like that. All right, like they have always been barbaric. Okay, and this is because back home on Earth, when Zeus created their race, like I told you, when Zeus created the human race, he bred them like that. Even now they're like that. You will never hear a black person going to shoot a hundred motherfuckers and then shoot itself. But they will though. You'll never hear about no black, no black or Latino person chopping a motherfucker up, then sitting down and eating them. But they will though. You'll never hear about no black motherfucker or no Latino motherfucker, if you want to call them that. No god or no goddess. Killing a the motherfucker. Then burying them in their wall and still living in the house the rest of their life. But they will, though. Well, they have a thousand motherfuckers buried in the walls. 
and all up under the house. John Gacy wasn't the first and he wasn't the last. John Wayne Gacy was not the first and he wasn't the last, man. All right. Now, these are these are the traits of the human beings. We just talk of science right now and genetics. These are the traits of the human being species. Now, check this out. Let's keep reading about these sayings. Let's see how. Check out their history. Check this out. This is supposed to be a cartoon, y'all. But check out this. Watch this story. The Saiyans were a group of barbaric aliens who arrived to the planet Vegeta, once known as the planet Plant, very long ago. Hmm, we are already sounding similar to the real creation story here now. The Saiyans were a group of barbaric aliens who arrived on this planet that they wasn't from, and they were already barbaric before they got there. Keep in mind, alien only means foreign, not from there. Because they already told you the Saiyans were what? Hold on, the Saiyans are what? Body type. Humanoid. Look at them. Humanoid. With tails. And we know, we know, we know who grow tails. To this day, we know who grow tails, okay? We know who grow tails. Let's see. Oh, okay, right. We know who grow tails, okay? To this day, we know who grow tails. This is real life pictures of people with tails. We know who grow tails, man, to this day, okay? And, and and you will never see nobody with carbon in their skin growing a tail. Okay, so let's go back to this supposed to be cartoon, though, about these sayings with these tails that are humanoid. Remember, y'all, it's supposed to just be a cartoon. Let's keep reading the history of the sayings in this cartoon. The sayings were a group of barbaric aliens who arrived to the planet Vegeta, once known as the planet Plant, very long ago. So that means they changed the name of the planet after they got there. Mm, sounds familiar to me. Their home planet, Sadala, had been destroyed due to conflict among Saiyans. Wow. Now, if you know true esoteric history, you will know for a fact that the human beings turned on Zeus on planet Nern and a whole war broke out and then they were then sent to planet Egypt alright where they escaped with help from these Pleiadians and these reptilians and that they warred on their own home planet so bad amongst each other that they turned on Zeus Let's keep reading. Their home planet Sadala had been destroyed due to conflict amongst themselves. They are the Saiyans. So they destroyed their own home planet. Sounds familiar to me. The indigenous life forms to this planet were the Tuffles. Okay, so the indigenous life forms to this planet called Vegeta, which the Saiyans invaded, were the Tuffles. Ooh, that sounds familiar to me. A very technologically advanced race. Okay, so the Saiyans invaded the planet, planet Vegeta, which was home to the Tuffles. The Saiyans were from Sandala, but they, but they, they destroyed their home planet because they were so warlike amongst each other. Sounds like the motherfucking human beings to me. That's what they did on their home planet of Nern. Okay, so the indigenous life forms to this planet were the Tuffles. And the Tuffles was a very technologically advanced race. See, listen, man. This is why, this is what I mean by when I say, when people say they put this shit in cartoons and movies. No, they really put the, this is the history of Dragon Ball Z. This is supposed to be a cartoon, y'all. Why is this this detail? 
That's what you should ask yourself. Why they got this website dedicated to it? Who wrote it? And you can go to any website. That's going to be the story because I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. So the website ain't doing nothing but just writing a story that's already been told on a damn cartoon years ago anyway. So you need to be asking who wrote the cartoon. And how did he think of this? Because we know that people without souls lack creativity. That's not racism. That's science. That's physics. That's metaphysics. Okay? Let's keep reading, though. This is supposed to be a cartoon. So, the Saiyans basically invaded the planet of the Tuffles, who are already a very technologically advanced race. When the Saiyans first arrived, they lived in the arid wastelands on the outskirts of the Tuffle cities. Do you hear this? What does that sound like to me? That sounds just like when they lived in the caves, in the Caucasus Mountains, on the outskirts. It say when the Saiyans arrived, they when the Saiyans first arrived on this planet that the Tuffles owned, they lived in the arid wastelands on the outskirts of the Tuffle cities. Okay? This is supposed to be a cartoon. Let's keep reading. The Tuffles had no way of knowing the Saiyans would eventually take the whole planet for themselves and destroy the Tuffle race. Sounds just like us. Didn't I say we didn't I say we welcomed them here when they first came, which we did? They ain't did nothing but wrote in this fucking cartoon what they did when they came and put little different names on it. And made a mockery of us. Okay. The Tuffles had no way of knowing the Sands would eventually take the whole planet for themselves and destroy the Tuffle race. One day a civil war broke out. Okay. So we know civil war means war within the planet. Okay. We know what happened when this war broke up on our, broke out on our planet when they turned on us by using our technology against us to destroy us from within. So check this out. One day a war broke out and the Saiyans tried many times to overthrow the Tuffles but were unsuccessful. Although the Saiyans were bigger in size and much stronger, they were fewer in number compared to the Tuffles. Now the bigger in size and much stronger, that's a lie. That's an exaggeration. Okay. It's just an exaggeration. All right. But they are telling you the history of what happened on this planet. Is they, they're, they're disguising it with names. All right. What also gave the Tuffles an upper hand was that they had technology to read the power levels of the Saiyans and advanced weaponry to hold them off. All right. So they keep talking about how this these Tuffles were so technologically superior advanced on this planet before the Saiyans even got there. Now, keep in mind, the person that wrote the cartoon, they're going to always still try to throw us off. So, you know, they're going to exaggerate little things, but I'm on their ass. I got you. Don't worry about it. Let's stay focused. Then one night, the Saiyans were able to transform into Azuru, also known as Great Apes, which increases their power levels by a factor of 10. Okay, so we already know that human beings are spliced with animal genetics. The pig, the lemur, the dog, and the snub-nosed monkey. Okay? We know this. So, why in this cartoon is it just so happened that these Saiyans who look human and they got tails just like human beings... Are able to transform form into these great apes. Which then they become more powerful. Thanks to the full moon. And the resultant blood waves. That only come once every 20 years. Which is once every 8 years. Alright so. Here they are on this cartoon. Talking about. These saints. Who invaded the planet of the Tuffles. Who it was their home planet, and they destroyed them. They killed them off. And these Saiyans killed them off by being able to turn into these great apes under this full moon 
that never existed before they came to the toughest planet. All right, now let's click on the Tuffles real quick. Let me show y'all something. So, let's read about the Tuffles real quick before we keep going. This is the Tuffles. Keep in mind that the Tuffles represents us as well right now and what happened when they first came to our planet. But let's read. The Tuffles were a highly advanced technological race of beings native to the planet Vegeta before it was taken over by the Saiyans. All right, now... They show you the Tuffles white because they're going to show you that everything. But look what they was into. Cloning and everything. And if you know the truth about your ancestry, we've been into, like I told you all, cloning, eugenics, creating different things, even cloning planets, universes, realities. Like, that's what we were doing. Okay? So, check it out. Let's read, about, let's read it from the Tuffles point of view. Despite their incredible technologies, the Tuffles were a largely a docile race and held no aggression towards each other or other races. So, they telling you the facts about your ancestry and how your ancestors was originally. Alright, remember the Saiyans came to the Tuffles planet. Check this out. Despite their incredible technologies, the Tuffles were largely a docile race. That mean they were cool, they were chilling, and they held no aggression towards each other or other races. Nor did they suffer from overpopulation. So they mean they was they was living their best life, y'all. Before the Saiyans ever came. Sounds sound sim sounds similar to me. Right? Sounds familiar to me. Alright? However, the Tuffles lived side by side with another race, the Saiyans. Some sources state that the Saiyans simply evolved alongside the Tuffles at a similar rate. Though the Saiyans and their society were still all arriving on strange starships one day. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. However, the Tuffles lived side by side with another race, the Saiyans. Some sources state that the Saiyans simply evolved alongside the Tuffles at a similar rate. Though the Saiyans and their society were still quite primitive, they were fully... Keyword primitive, y'all. That's look, listen to their story. They were fully sapien. While others indicate that the Saiyans were not native to the planet plant at all, arriving on a strange starship one day. You hear this story? So this is this, this is from the Tuffles side. The Tuffles, this was their planet first. Who you think they had the Tuffles behind? And look how the Tuffles look. The most evolved Tuffles look like this. Look what color they were, green. These are the enhanced Tuffles. They were green. Okay. So, and we know we were green, blue, and red originally. So just listen to this story, though. And most people never read, went behind Dragon Ball Z to dive this deep. Even people that wrote, wrote, watched the cartoon, they didn't never read the, read the comic strips. You got to go read the comic strips um, on these cartoons, y'all. The Supermans, the Batmans. That's what I mean by research, man. And then go just read a little into genetics and you're going to be overblown. You ain't got to keep subscribing. You go read that for yourself and you everything you need to know. And just learning that empowers you to do it. Okay? It, it will empower you to be able to do it because this is things you need to know about. This is history you need to know about. You need to know who the real Saiyans are. Alright? Who, who the real Saiyans are. Because guess what? These beings that they showing on, on Dragon Ball Z as Saiyans still aren't the real Saiyans. Those beings, the Saiyans, that's their story or that's the human beings. But they are not capable of doing what they are saying they are capable of doing on there. That's our traits. So this is how they threw us off. Just like they, they told our story and called us Tuffles. However, the Tuffles live side by side with another race, the Saiyans. Some sources state the Saiyans simply evolved alongside the Tuffles at a similar rate. Though the Saiyans in their society were still quite primitive. Come on, man. We already know the stories we didn't heard. Long before the University of Cosmic Intelligence was erected, I'm pretty sure you all heard stories about who was living in the caves. So that would be primitive. Why is this story eerily similar like this, y'all? How is it supposed to just be a cartoon? And trust me, they don't expect y'all to, they don't expect us to be reading this right now. They do not expect niggas to be reading no shit like this or putting two and two together because people don't even read 
into the back. I'm re- I went on the background of the comics. I went on their history channel, like they fandoms to read like behind it. Even though I already knew all this, I wanted something to show y'all. Cause I could say all this, but I want y'all to see what these car what this cartoon is about. Okay? You gotta open your third eye so you can grasp all that knowledge because it's all around you. Don't be scared to watch a cartoon. Don't be scared to be, oh no, nah, that's a movie. No, because they put everything, that's where they put everything at. How the fuck this story lining up like that? Ain't no way. This is supposed to be a cartoon. Ain't no way, man. If y'all listening to what I'm reading, are you serious? And then and everybody in here, third eye open. So you see through this shit like a, like a motherfucking cream soda pop. You feel me? You see clean through it like a cream soda Fago or something. You feel me? Like you... Fago bottle, I see through you, cream soda. Come on, stop it. I see through the other side of that. You can be, you should better see clean through that. They said they were quite primitive, the Saiyans. This this was the tough who said about the Saiyans. Then they said, while well, others indicate that the Saiyans were not native to planet plant at all. Remember, it was planet plant first. And Vegeta first, and then the Saiyans killed them off and renamed it. So that's why they're saying Other, others indicate that the Saiyans were not natives of Planet Planet at all, arriving on a strange starship one day. Who, who just came and arrived on our shit on a strange starship one day? They did. Which is why we call them Caucasians, because they came through the Caucasus Mountains. They did. And see, they put it right in front of your face. That's how they do it. Check the story. Let's keep reading the story of the Tuffles. The later was, was the latter the later was revealed to be true, as the Saiyans are originally from planet Sadala. So they wasn't from their planet. They were from a different planet, and they did just come on a strange starship one day. Then, relationships between, between the two races is also mixed. The first account explains that the Tuffles lived in their advanced cities in the more fertile areas of, of the planet, while the Saiyans lived in large tribes out in the Badlands. Who that sound like? And the two very rarely, if ever, interacted with each other. What started the war is debatable. Dr. Rachik account states that the Tuffles welcomed the Saiyans with open arms and treated them as equals. That show what the fuck we did when these human beings got here with these Pleiadians. We welcomed niggas with open arms. The whole fucking story of the pilgrims and the Indians is really about because we the fucking Indians. So it was never no fucking pilgrim, Indian shit, nothing. Nigga, wasn't no ship came, no pilgrims jumped off. We kicked it with them, none of that. Wasn't no Indians, nigga. We are the gods. We are the motherfucking Indians, nigga, that's walking around. That you, we used to be Cherokee and Illinois and not and all these not. Americans and Mexicans and all this shit. But before all that took place, when they first landed, we welcomed them with open arms. I've always, I've always told y'all this, right? And you can go hear others talking about it. Like I always say, that's what Malcolm meant when he said we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. This ancient story that has been passed down from generation to generation about these beings coming to our planet and us and 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 human beings not being from that's not no that's not no exaggeration that's not a lie so how the fuck is this shit in the cartoon you know what i'm saying they don't expect you to read all this who who for to go read this this is a website everybody reading this in 2021 let alone putting it together if once they read it so they you know what we doing right now is like just some 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 hack in the matrix shit right now. You know what I'm saying? To, to make a, a deeper point. Why is this cartoon this fucking detailed? You should ask that too. 
This history too damn detailed for it to just be a cartoon. Now check this out. Check this out. Eventually, regardless of their origins, one saying became dominant amongst the collective tribes. A saying Dr. Rachi describes as having the cunning of a tuffle. This saying was none other than King Vegeta, and he incited a swift and brutal war against the tuffles with the intent of eradicating them entirely. Who that sound like? Who, who, who incited a brutal war against us with the intent of eradicating us entirely? You see what I'm saying? Remember, this is the Saiyans who did this to the Tuffles, but this is the fucking Tuffles planet. Saiyans ain't even from there. The outcome of many battles was mostly even. Since though the Saiyans had greater strength, they possessed far fewer numbers, allowing the technological Tuffles to tip the battles with their advanced weaponry. Unfortunately, the war was brought to a sudden end by the arrival of an event that only occurred on a, on a on planet plant once every 20 years, the full moon. So check this out. On Dragon Ball Z, they telling you that this full moon event occurred once every 20 years or eight years. When in reality, though, there was never a moon. So them telling you on Dragon Ball Z that it occurred one it occurred once every 20 years, that's just to show you that hey, this shit was rare. We never had a moon. This moon shit don't be just happening. And when you think of a moon, you think of what? A full moon. You don't think of no half moon, no quarter moon. When you think of the moon, you think of a big ass moon out there. That's what you think of. Okay? The entire didn't say the entire sand race transformed into their their eight forms in the space of a single night. The whole tuffles were annihilated, taking what little of the technology that interests them, most notably the, sc the scouters and battle armor. The Saiyans established their own society amidst the ruins of the tuffle civilization. Crowning King Vegeta and naming the planet after him. Who the fuck does that sound like? Killed us off, took the technology from us. This is what I was telling y'all when I've been saying, hey, and other intellects that this technology we see like this little lab type shit, this, this is nothing. This is nothing. We built everything. We built with our minds. You are mentalists. You are magicians. And it's certain technology that we had that they took that makes light code lockdown possible. Certain foods are fed to us as part of this technology that they took to keep us from. All right, because remember, all this power that they say the Saiyans got, they don't have. Okay. The only power our oppressors has is the lies that he has taught to us. And he gets us to believe in his lie and we create what he needs us to believe. Okay, let me say this over. Let me say this over. The, the, the oppressor has no power over us, right? The only power he has is that he has the gift of lying. Okay, so that's deception. And we are the creators. We are the ancient beings. So the oppressor, all he needs to create his world he uses us and he gets us to create his world by getting us to believe in his lies. OK, we believe in his lies and by us being ancient beings, our, our belief in his lies will then begin to shape his lies into a reality. They, we, they then manifest through our belief in them because we are ancient beings. This is just metaphysics one on one. And they know this. Right. So check out in this cartoon how they putting this shit right in your face. It say the Saiyans, after they destroyed the Tuffles, 
They built their own new city out of the ruins of the Tuffles. Ain't that what they did to us? Blew up all our crystal towers and pyramids and Oregon energy pyramids that was made out of pure crystals. Cut down all our real trees. Laid down Absol and, 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 and tore down a lot of powerful landmarks that we needed. That emitted certain energies. Now they got cities over these energy portals. Right? And they built their own society out of our ruins. And then, in here they saying that they renamed the planet after Vegeta. Did they not rename our planet? It's not, it's not Kai anymore. It was planet Kai before they got here. And Tiamat. Now it's Earth. And we know who made Earth. Their creator made Earth. Zeus. Because Zeus made Nern. And Earth is the nickname for Nern. Okay, so they put this shit right in the little cartoons. You feel me? Now, let's go back. All right, let's keep reading. So, let's keep reading about the Saiyans. All right, so we went into the Tuffles. We just dove into the Tuffles because we had to figure out who the Tuffles was. Remember, everybody, a lot of people never seen this cartoon, and this is just being used for curriculum sakes right, right now, class. So we all let's stay locked in. All right, check this out. Now, we so we back to talk about the Saiyans. Now, it says, however, after their victory, so there being the Saiyans, after their victory, the Saiyans had no way of expanding. After their victory, after their victory, the Saiyans had no way. After their victory, the Saiyans had no way of expanding their planet since they didn't have the knowledge to build spaceships. Okay? I don't know if y'all can see that. There you go. However, after their victory, the Saiyans had no way of expanding beyond their planet since they didn't have the knowledge to build spaceships. Their, okay, so now. Remember, they tell you in a cartoon that the Saiyans took the technology from the Tuffles. But they did not have the superior gifts to use it. So they didn't have the knowledge to build the spaceship, so they asked for stuck there. Who does that sound like to you? Who does that sound like to you? Because they got all our technology and they still can't figure shit out. Can't, they got all our shit and don't know how to use it. They got all our supreme technology, our books, everything under the Vatican, but don't know how to use it. That's why they be mad. They're like, damn, we took their shit, but we don't know how to use it. They can't figure out how to get into the depths of the pyramids, and they ain't going to let, you, let your carbonated ass walk in there neither, because they know that you got the, the codes locked literally inside of your DEA. Me and you walk in the pyramids, the doors going to slide unlock on their own. It's certain chambers in the pyramids to this day that they can't even get in. And they're they not telling the public. But they know if they was to let somebody with carbon in their skin, a nine eighth of being walk on the pyramids, them chamber doors will completely unlock just off the energy field of that supreme nine eighth of being walking in there. All right, so let's keep, let's keep reading about the sins, though. However, after their victory, the Saiyans had no way of expanding beyond their planet since they didn't have the knowledge to build spaceships. Their lust and hunger for conquest was put on hold until after uh, until another advanced race made contact with Vegeta. Okay, pay attention, y'all. Their lust and hunger for conquest was put on hold until another advanced race made contact with Vegeta. Now, remember, Vegeta being the planet, so it made contact with the planet. The Acrucians, whom had money and technology met the Saiyans and formed an alliance with most of the higher Saiyans to take over a planet for them. The Acrusians. Do you know who the Acrusians represent, y'all? The Pleiadians. Who had money and technology, met the Saiyans and formed an alliance with most of the higher Saiyans to take over a planet for them. This is how, this is the talking about how when 
they were on stuck on planet Egypt in real life, the human beings, the Pleiadians and reptilians came to them and forged an alliance with them and needed their help to take over our home planet. But in here, they just say the Acrusians, but the Acrusians don't stand for the reptilians. They represent the Pleiadians and how they, and the relationship they have with the human beings. Check this out. The Acrusians whom had money and technology met the Saiyans and formed an alliance with most of the higher Saiyans to take over a planet for them. In return, the Acrusians would share their technology. Pleiadians shared their technology with the human beings. Over the years, the Saiyans also learned how to use the Tuffles advanced equipment and became smarter and less barbaric. So check this out. And this happened too. They say over the years, eventually the Saiyans learned how to use all the Tuffles advanced equipment. Not all of it, but some of it. And they became smarter and less barbaric because of it. And this is the fact. This has actually happened with the human being race and these presses, these, 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 the rich races elite. Check this out. Over the years, the Saiyans also learned how to use the Tumfles advanced equipment and became smarter and less barbaric, although they still lusted for fighting and destruction. So check this out. Is that not the human being race? They got all that technology. They still took, they took our planet from us and everything, and they still created wars and havoc on this planet after taking the planet from us. All those fake wars. World War I was fake. World War II was fake. Vietnam, Cold War, War on Terror. All those wars were, 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 were gods lost their life and people actually went to war. When I say fake, I mean they were manufactured wars. Just to create bodies to feed colonies of reptilians and Pleiadians who eat the bodies of us. All right. Now check this out. Over it says. Over the years, the Saiyans also learned how to use the Tuffles advanced equipment to become smart and less barbaric, although they still lusted for fighting and destruction. At some unknown time, following the same victory, the planet was conquered or annexed by Frieza's empire. So when they get to talk about Frieza empire now. Check this out. They say at some unknown time following the same victory. So this after they took the planet from us, the planet was then conquered or annexed by Frieza's empire. Now, Frieza empire represents the reptilian race. Who came and took it from the Pleiadians and the human beings. And formed a new alliance where the, where the reptilians run everything. This is what this represents. Check it out. In Frieza's empire, and the Saiyans, like many other races, were drafted to serve as soldiers in Frieza's military. So keep in mind, Frieza empire represents the reptilians, and the Saiyans are the human beings. Okay? So that's why they're telling you the planet was conquered or annexed by, by Frieza, a.k.a. the reptilians, and the Saiyans, a.k.a. the humans, like many other races, were drafted to serve as soldiers in the reptilians' military. That's what that should say, but they put Frieza. And then I'm going to show you how Frieza look real quick. Let's go look at Lord Frieza for those of you who don't know the way they depicted this character in Dragon Ball Z. Let me show them to y'all real quick. There you go. So look, that's supposed to be Frieza on Dragon Ball Z. Look how he look. All right. That's supposed to be Frieza. And he got a bunch of different shapes or whatever. But these are other shapes he got. All right. This supposed to be Frieza. But he represents the reptilian. He represents the reptilian race in the cartoon, though. All right. The draconian reptilian race. That's why they got him with the horns and all that. The draconian reptilian race. So you got actual draconian reptilians that look like this. And they stand 20, 30, 25 feet, 30 feet tall. And I I, I never made my lecture on the draconian reptilians like I was going to do. I'm going to still do it. But yeah, alpha draconians are 25 feet to 30 feet.
and everything. So when they showing you like they these this is symbolic of how the 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 head alpha draconians look back in the you know what I'm saying the Draco star system. So that's Frieza though. Okay, so now you know how Frieza look. So that's who took over the planet, and that's who the Saiyans end up working for. You see what I'm saying? Sounds familiar. Because of the Saiyans in that, in that strength and pitching for violence, it shouldn't be strength because that belongs to us. That violence belongs to them. They were considered to be useful mercenaries and assisted in the conquering of many planets. I just did a lecture on mercenaries the other day. There go that word. I just did a, mer a lecture on mercenaries the other day on YouTube. Go watch it. And there go that word here today. It's popping up and we wasn't even looking for it. You see how the universe work? You see how the universe work? Let him who has eyes see clearly. Because of the sayings... Pension for violence, which it should say, because we the ones with the strength. They were considered to be useful mercenaries and assisted in the conquering of many planets. Okay? So you had human beings that did go off to help the insectoids and the greys and conquer other planets along while conquering this one. Remember, that's what they came here to do originally. Alright? So... Or for Simon called for the eradication of the planet's population. So it's letting you know that Saiyans were they were created to destroy shit. See? It's talking about how the Saiyans were. They had assignments where they were had to had to eradicate the planet's population. And if you pay attention to what human beings have the high races would have done here, that's what they have tried to do. Eradicate our population through medication. Through STDs, through drugs, through food, in many ways. All right. Now, why would all this detail and depth be in a cartoon, y'all? You think a little eight year old can 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 fathom all this? Seven year olds just watching. They used to watch. No, you just watching the fight. What's up with all this background? Though? Why so in depth though? See, what I'm saying that's what you should ask yourself. What? Whoa, whoa! How? Whoa! This some. This a creative ass mind, ain't it? If we, I, we reading a cartoon, and then it feel like we reading a history book. Especially when we got our third eye open, so we could see through the light codes. You know, because they kept the story the same. They just moved a few words around. Now check this out. <laughs> this also took place. Remember. I <laughs> This also took place. This is how human beings end up getting abducted. Check this out. As even saying children were considered powerful enough to conquer some of the weaker planets such as Earth. Okay. Eventually, seeing how quickly some of the more gifted saying warriors were gaining power through battle, Frieza, Draconian Reptilian, grew concerned with the potential of the Saiyan race, human beings, and thought that they would grow strong enough to face him or even become the fabled Super Saiyans, able to defeat him in battle. So as in betrayal, the maniacal and heartless alien warlord destroyed planet Vegeta, which is where the Saiyans was at, almost eradicating the entire Saiyan race. So that's basically telling you how the reptilians turned on the hierarchy human beings, which I've been told y'all about that. And that's how human beings started getting abducted by greys and insectoids. And that's why right now, human beings don't run shit no more. Not even the highest ranking ones that used to run shit. They, they not even don't run shit no more. They like still up there, but they don't run shit. It's the reptilians that run everything. They have invaded the entire planet. All right. So, this is where we want to look at real quick. Okay. So, they're going to talk about some traits. And when they get into the traits, 
This is where they throw you off. This is how they had our history from us because they showing you white cartoon characters. Okay. And then that story they just gave you, right, was the story of human beings. So that story was true. But when they come to like their abilities, all these abilities, okay, are our abilities. So let's read some of these traits though real quick. Tail. All pure-blooded Saiyans possess a, pre a prehensile tail that is monkey-like in appearance and covered in brownish fur. The tail is a particularly sensitive area for Saiyans when grabbed or injured. It causes great pain to the owner and temporarily immobilizes them. However, elite-class Saiyans can train themselves to overcome the weakness as did Nabo, Prince Vegeta, and also Goku, and the tail becomes no more fragile than any other limb. All right, now... That's how they feel. See what I'm saying? That's one of their traits that the human beings go through because we just seen that they grow what? That they grow what? The tails. Okay? So, this is why they're able to talk in such detail about the shit in the goddamn cartoon down to the point of, hey, it causes great pain to the owner and temporarily immobilizes them. Why do you got to put all that detail in a cartoon? That don't even really matter. If they got to tell, they got to tell. But this whole backstory to the tail and the traits of the tail all the way down to, like, that's because it's, a, it's the truth. You know, all right, check this out. The tail also provides a unique gift in that it allows a Saiyan to transform into a great ape and potentially a golden great ape. All right. So when they saying great ape, this is just symbolic for saying it's allowing them to tap into that animal strength within them, that animal DNA within them. All right. If the tail is removed, though, this power is lost. And this does happen to a lot of human beings when they lose their tails at birth because they want them to they want to hide it from society. Meanwhile, though. Those high racist human beings, those those rich, those rich elite. They don't get rid of their tails. They keep them. All right. Saiyan's children seem to have the ability to grow back their tails at various times, but at some point in this life, this regenerative ability is lost. All right. Now, check this out. Traits. So this is when I get into the real Super Saiyans. This is talking about your DEA. They talking about God DEA right here. Saiyans possess large quantities of superhuman strength, which is superior to many different species, at least thousands of times that of humans, and are quite essentially built for fighting. Remember, we know who the humans are. So right here, they being tricky because they got you thinking Saiyans are just those fictional people and the humans are the humans on the cartoon. But in reality, the Saiyans are us right now that they're talking about the God DEA and the humans are really their, themselves. All right, so peep game. Saiyans possess large quantities of superhuman strength, which is superior to many different species, at least thousands of times that of humans, and are quite essentially built for fighting. The naturally high, the naturally high gravity of planet Vegeta develops their strength further, making them inhumanly strong at young ages. Even weaker Saiyans are capable of conquering most planets alone. Remember I told, I was telling you how your ancestors was taking our whole military post alone? All right. This is how powerful we are. A lot of y'all don't know that you so powerful that just one of us alone could, could take over the whole planet and raise the frequency of the whole planet. Just all it takes is one of us to rise. This is why they always have, this is why they have always been so hard to keep the truth away from us, y'all. This is why they censoring me on YouTube. Fucking, I, like, I couldn't get this lecture on YouTube right now. If I was giving this lecture on YouTube, they'd have been to cut this shit short. Because what I'm breaking down now is these metaphysical secrets that's hidden in this fucking cartoon. I know the real story, so I can point out the, like, this is what they mean by this. This is what they mean by this. You get what I'm saying? And then this helps you all. A lot of y'all go, now you can go watch the cartoon from a different point of view and be like, oh, okay, 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 cool. Okay, cool. You need to know that because they, they had to tell it to you, so this was their way of telling it to you. All right, but peep, but peep game. 
Even weaker Saiyans are capable of conquering most planets alone. This is why they attack our babies, y'all. They attack us as babies and they attack our babies because of this, this line right here. Even weaker Saiyans, because we the real Super Saiyans, even weaker Saiyans are capable of conquering most planets alone. Facts. Notably, the Saiyans sent to conquer Earth when they go back to Saiyan sent to conquer Earth. Now they back to talk about what the human beings did when they came. All right. Kakarot was an abnormally weak newborn at the time. They talk about uh, Goku. All right. Saiyans are able to reach new levels of power and more with the more intense training and fights they go through, the stronger they become. So when they talk about fights, that's just things you're going through in general. Energy cycles. They don't mean fight literally. All right. This is how they hide. They hide it behind the term fight. All right. And when they say intense training, this should be really say strengthening your chi. And that would be through meditation and water dieting and fasting and things like that. So they're not going to tell you how to do it. So they're just going to say through intense training. You know, like that's how the, that's how the elites hide it from you. All right. Speed. The Saiyans also have great speed and agility. They also have much faster reflexes than the average human. Reflexes so fast that they can avoid or catch a bullet or energy being without much of a problem. Okay, so why would they say catch a bullet? All right, didn't they show you this in, in Bruce Lee, Barry Gordy's Last Dragon? They showed you Bruce Lee were catching a bullet. And then I got an Instagram clip, all right, that I should have pulled up, but I didn't, where I can show you people catching bullets. Over in South Africa. And people would think it's fake footage, but it's not. It's real. Catching bullets with their mouth. So, this is more than possible, but why would they say bullet, though? They don't even be using bullets on Dragon Ball Z. See what I'm saying? They be using energy beams and fighting like that. So, why would they say a bullet right here? Because they, they slipped up. They talking about us. And let you know how strong your DA is. So super speed can easily be seen in their fight skills that movements occur in fractions of a second, which are not visible to human eyes. All right. So then they keep going into age and lifespan, blah, 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 blah. All right. So we went to the Tuffles. We went to the Tuffles, who they was talking about us. Now, let's get back out. Let's go back out freezer. Let me show you something. So... In this Dragon Ball cartoon, they had all type of characters. You see the character with the one eye on top of his forehead. You see the green characters. They supposed to be Namekians. All right. Martian Boo character. All right. Represent actual beings. These beings that actually exist. All right. So hold on. Let's, let, let, let's go down, though. Let's go down. Let's go down. Check this out. Look at him. He got the third eye symbolism on his head, y'all. All right. So, you know, you got... All type of characters. You got Goku. Though he appears human, human is later revealed that he's a member of an alien race known as the Saiyans. His original name is Kakarot. All right, he's like the star of the little cartoon show. This is Goku right there. All right. Um, these Saiyans, how he's a Saiyan. He's a Saiyan. And, of course, they made the Saiyans the strongest ones on the cartoon. But, of course, we see what color they got them. Okay, everybody's everybody got everybody's on the cartoon is white, of course. When... Everybody should have been with these traits should have had carbon in their skin. Green, blue, red, or they should have been I showed them copper complexion. Alright. Now you got Piccolo. He is a Namekian. Namekians actually exist. Alright? Namekians actually a planet, and Namekians actually exist. And then they show you they show you Namekians in this cartoon, and they put them in the cartoon. So this is this is Piccolo right here. 
That's on the Mechian. All right. These beings actually exist. And it's funny because now they want to tell you UFOs are real and all that bullshit. But this is shit they already knew because they was putting this shit in cartoons years ago. But the Mechians actually exist. All right. Vegeta was another saying. Was another saying that was very strong in a cartoon. All right. And the Saiyans, because they are they are animal like, Vegeta stayed fighting Goku because even though they both Saiyans, remember, they destroyed their planet the same way, doing the same thing. All right. So the reason I have pulled these some of these characters up is just so you can see how they put this in here, right? Beerus. Beerus is a character on here who is, let's click on him. Beerus. That's Beerus. Look at him. Look what he got on. And look what color he is. And we'll look what he's calling the cartoon. God of destruction. And he's the most powerful. Look, Beerus made his first... He Hold on, let me, let me go down to it. I just want to jump down straight to the point where he beat Goku ass. Check him out. He is a god resembling a purple cat wearing a traditional Egyptian clothing and ornaments. It says, it has been stated that Beerus is capable of destroying entire universes by wits. Often seen destroying planets at a whim. All right. Now, Beerus represents the ancestors and that represents us, too. That's why they showed him with that that high purple pigmentation. All right. And with that Egyptian attire. All right. But. Look, check them out. And they talk about alternate universes in Dragon Ball Z. Beerus possesses strength capable of easily destroying the universe. During his first fight with Super Saiyan God Goku, the clash of the two fists created ripples which traveled through the macrocosm of Universe 7 and was said to be able to destroy the universe if it continued. Look at all these abilities that they talk about. Like, check this out. It is also revealed that after the fight that Beerus was holding back a considerable huge amount of his power and had an ability, an ability to neutralize any mortal's energy. In chapter 20 of the Dragon Ball Super Magna, Beerus is shown to have the imperfect version of Ultra Instinct, which was showcased as he dodged the attacks of every other god of destruction. Some of Beerus' unique attacks include Spear of Destruction. Now check it out. Where he creates a small sun-like, so that's chromosomes, energy, Photon energy, where he creates a small sun-like ball of energy in between his hands, raises his arms and quickly enlarges the ball before launching it. All right, so he got another one called Destruction Before Creation, where he surrounds himself in an orbit resembling the sun prior to releasing an energy wave. All right, Beerus' strongest technique, High Key, can be used to completely obliterate objects and entities within the universe. High Key is able to instantly destroy the body and even souls of mortals and low-tier gods, which can be seen in action when Beerus uses this, te this technique on Zamuza and the ghost of Dharmar Rejirito. Although the technique is first seen being used by Beerus, all gods of destruction can utilize the ability. All right, so when you, when you hear about his abilities, right? They just telling you shit about your DEA. And when he fought Goku, Goku lost. All right? That's why it says right here, he beat, he defeated Goku. But he spares him in Earth. So after he defeats Goku, he could have destroyed the Earth, but he didn't. Right? So that's just symbolic of when they made Goku lose this fight to Beerus, Goku is what? A Saiyan. So he represents the human being race. And Beerus represents us, the God, which a, which is which a, which a human a, a, say, a human being can never defeat a God. So that's why they in the cartoon, they did not let Goku defeat Beerus. But the only reason planet Earth survived in the cartoon is because they made Beerus just spare Earth even after he defeated Goku. So this is how they keep all the, they keep all the truth in these cartoons like this. You see what I'm saying? They keep the truth in there now. <clears throat> they keep the truth in there like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Even when you go down and read about King Piccolo, like you can read about all these characters y'all sell, but when you read about these characters and their backstories, you know, it's, it, it, you, you quickly see like, okay, this, where did you, where, hold on, hold on, where, where did y'all get this, this creativity from? You know what I'm saying? You didn't just sit back and make all this up. You 
you know? And and as far as the saying race, we represent the real super saiyans. But they gave them our abilities on here, y'all. You see what I'm saying? They gave them our traits and abilities, but put their story on them. They put the real story of the human beings on the Saiyans, but they made the Saiyans have white skin. When in reality, the way it should have been is the Saiyans should have been black people on the cartoon. And that story about the Saiyans coming to take over the planet from the truffle shouldn't have never been because that wouldn't have never had really happened. Because really, the human beings came and took the planet from us, along with the Pleiadians. Now, why is it term saying? You know, like, we are the sayings, though. So I'm saying we the real sayings. We the real sayings, man. Now, when you talk about the word samurai, we are the original samurais. Okay? But when you look up, all you get is Yasuki, African samurai. That's all you'll see is one story about that on Google. You'll never see another story of, of, of that. But we are the original samurais. All right. When you when you when you see um um the graffiti that's used in mixed martial arts, um, where do you think that comes from? That's nothing but hieroglyphics. All right, because we are our ancestors always taught using pictures because we knew that pictures was the best way to for for the brain to learn based upon our pineal gland. All right, we always taught using pictures. So hieroglyphics was just pictures. All right, because most of us, even now, you learn visually. Most people need to see it, right? So our ancestors already know this about the brain and the way it functions. Just showed it to you. That's what hieroglyphics is. And that's what most of, of, of what's now called Chinese and Mandarin and all that. That's where that comes from. That's the, a lot of that is basically Chinese font of today is hieroglyphics. All right. So when you talk about the original samurais, that's us. All right. That's another. That's more what revealing of the DEA. And you can even be a part of certain uh, uh, Japanese tribes if you even if you had African blood. You know, it was certain um 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 human beings who. Or, or who are who are Asian, if you want to call them, then they were trying to be samurai back in the day in Japan, and they had to get tested. There was these tests they made them do, and if you had one drop of of African blood or of what you want to call a uh, god blood in you, you couldn't even become an official samurai. Okay, this was a fact to hide this from us, you know, to keep us away from you know who we really are. In these ancient truths that everything came from us. You can't even find that many pictures like that neither when you go to Google. You know? These Namekians right here, right? On Dragon Ball Z. These, this species really exists. Species of being really exists in Namekians. And look where they home what look where they say their home world is, another realm in the seventh universe. Average height, roughly five to seven feet. Diet, primarily water and rarely solid foods. Like, who you think will put all that in the cartoon, man? P 
People from planet NAMAC, also commonly known as NAMACs, are a race from NAMAC. They exist in both the 6th universe and the 7th universe, and were originally from another realm altogether. Namekians are able to make their own set of Dragon Balls. They are humanoid with plant and slug-like characteristics, including green skin and antenna. Alright? So, when you read about their traits, right? <laughs> you will, It's crazy because... They put all this truth, right? And look at all this. Who finna read all this? Ain't nobody finna read. Most people ain't finna read all this. You see what I'm saying? They not finna take the time to read all this. And that's what you need to be doing, though. Fuck them pictures. You know what I'm saying? You need to read these stories, man. Don't let them pictures throw you off. Read the story, man. Read the story, man. They got everything down about this species from their enhanced hearing down to their heart and skin, down to their regeneration, body flexibility and stretching and awakening potential, magic materialization, the Mechian fusion. The Mechians of the Dragon Clan can create items like clothing out of thin air. Prodigies of the Dragon Clan can even use it to create Dragon Ball. So they just saying they can mad, they can manifest anything they want. Awaken the potential of somewhat mystical ability. Um, they are able to raise the power level of individuals by awakening their potential, which is what you do anyway. When you awaken the potential of anybody, you you raise their power level. You know what I'm saying? Like this is like when you enlighten somebody. Like that's why I basically empower you when I bring you in and I enlighten you to certain things. That's why I want to enlighten you to empower you. That's that that and to give you your power back. Like right. So when you looking at and and that's when you give somebody a compliment, you empower them. When you directing them, when you teach it, or any form of fashion, you know. So look at all these traits, right? Namek like. The 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 traits, telekinesis, telepathy, chi, look, chi manipulation, the Mechians are known to be capable of controlling their chi as they surprise Frieza, reptilian, and his troops when they raised their power levels after arriving at a village being attacked and the scouter showed that they initially had low power levels. Now, in Dragon Ball Z, they call them power levels, but in the hospital, they call them dark, ma dark matter energy levels. You see what I'm saying? These Namekians really exist. So this is an actual species. You know what I'm saying? That's, that lives on a different planet. And they show us all of this in cartoons. Right? They put it all in cartoons. The whole story, the backdrop, everything. But in reality, we the real super saiyans, though. We the real saiyans. Those are our abilities that they showing you, that they talking about. That story of the Tuffles, that represents our ancestry. Them being the Saiyans with the tails. Growing, getting strong under the full moon. The full moon only coming once every 20 years, meaning it's not natural to the planet. You have to remember who you are because our oppressors do. It's time for us to start... The you to really tap into the DA, the the, the 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 energy is here. But how can I get you all to 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 work on manifesting and using magic and tapping into your magical abilities, right? If if and, and being able to command the elements of nature with 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 the vibrations of your voice, if you don't even believe, how can you believe if unless unless you know what's already inside of you? So that's what this lecture is about because that's the time we're moving into. We're preparing for war out here. You got to know what's in you. You got to know what you are, man.
But with that being said, I will see y'all in class tomorrow. Peace to the guys and guys of the planet Kai. Now we rise. One.